comes with the next slide, uh, maybe. Uh, gravity, in fact, I say it now. We know of the existence of dark matter just through its gravitational effect. So it's really through gravity that we observe or we know of the existence of dark matter is the gravitational uh, attraction of dark matter on all other objects in the universe which keeps it all together. It's through gravity that we know that dark matter is there. So all what is, the question is, but is all that we see, all that there is in this universe? I told you already the answer, but this is the pie chart. It's not a cake, but if you were to think of a cake and you feel disappointed that as part of the cake, we only, we're only about 5%. The ordinary matter that we know of makes only less than 5%. You might feel disappointed, but maybe it's not that bad at the end. I always say that because we're not, probably not so unique in this. We feel unique. We should feel always unique, but we're just a very tiny piece of this universe. And so the ordinary matter is less than 5% and the stars and the beautiful thing that we see actually is even much less than that, about 1%. The rest is about 27% in dark matter and the remaining fraction is some other stuff that we even know even less about or even as challenging dark energy. We're not going to talk about that today. So that's our understanding of the universe today. And the question is if the majority of the matter in the universe, if you take that ratio, I mean 85% of the matter in the universe, you can say this way, is dark. So if the majority, it's another pie chart, if the majority or 85% of the matter in the universe is dark, how do we know it is there actually? Because if we don't see, how do we know it's there? That's the question. And so I'm going to tell you a few of the evidence, some of the evidence, the most uh, uh, maybe approachable evidence or clear evidence that dark matter is there. And the and I already told you that we know of its existence of its existence through its gravitational effects. But the in these slides you have one of the most direct evidence for dark matter, which is from the studies of the rotational velocity of the stars in one galaxy. We are at the galaxy level, and these are studies that were initiated in the 70s by Vila Rubin, here pictured. So she was studying galaxy after galaxy, the, ro the rotational velocity of the stars in the galaxy, and she would have expected, or we would expect, as we go far away from the center of the galaxy, that those stars at the edge of the galaxy would move slower than the star closer to the center without even knowing Newtonian mechanical relativity. It's just if the mass of the galaxy is concentrated in the center, you expect that the pull of gravity that the star at the edge would feel would be much less. So it would decrease, you would expect the velocity to decrease with distance since the gravitational attraction is a force which goes like one over the distance squared. So you would expect a decrease in the velocity of the stars at the edge. However, what she observed, what we keep observing is that all the, the velocity is actually quite constant as far as you can measure. So in order to explain this observation and this behavior of the constant velocity or rotational velocity of the stars in a galaxy, you have to invoke the presence of something which is not visible. And so the conclusion was, or it is, this is the evidence that there must be a mass which is invisible, which provides the attraction, the gravitational attraction for the stars at the edge to be moving at the same speed as all the others. So at least 10 times more mass than there is in the visible spectrum that she observed. But this is not only at the, um, from this picture already we have, from this observation we have then the astrophysicist, the astroparticle physicist view of a galaxy. I showed you the Milky Way before, but so for an astronomer the Milky Way is this nice uh, uh, spiral shaped galaxy and is observable up to the edge. I gave you the extension of the edge, but in principle our view of a galaxy is that 
there is this visible galactic disk and its bulge but it is embedded in this cloud of in this cloud or uh, uh, halo of dark matter which can extend very very far actually it's, we we imagine it's spherical sorry and so coming back to our milky way you can think of the edge of the dark matter halo from the center to be about 10 times an order of magnitude larger than the extension of the center of the Milky Way to the edge which I showed you before. So we have this picture of the galaxy in which we live as a core, a central galaxy but surrounded in a halo of dark matter. And these are the the density of or dark matter particle in the halo of this galaxy is one of the ingredients that we use when we try to estimate or when we